All right. Ape is rolling. It is Taco Tuesday. Now that's what I, that's why I said it felt weird. I didn't put Taco Tuesday in the today's tweet. <laughs> I knew there was something wasn't right about that. That's okay. Diet on the set, boys and girls. Getting ready to go live on the radio. Oops, I thought I shut that off. Zoom Room Video Communications brought to you by the BMC. Quiet on the set! You're listening to WRFB Radio Free Britannia and no other freaking better place in the world than Deltona, Florida. Here you are, lunch with no other than the dynamic duo, Lance and Jack. <laughs> Greetings, everybody. This is Laz. And Jack is in a meeting, so hopefully he will be joining us shortly. If not, I'm sure Ekondis will be more than happy to keep his seat warm while we uh, await him arriving on scene. Right, Ekondis? I, kn I know you're more than willing to do that, because that's the kind of really nice guy you are out there. But welcome to today's show, boys and girls. It is Taco Tuesday here inside and outside Trinity Avatar. It is April 28th, and we are two days away from release 77. And with two days away, we have no clue what's coming out in 77 right now. So we're just uh, speculating what things that we're going to see out there. Of course, uh, got to give some shout outs here as we... Uh, there you go, Econ. This, you get the appropriate garb on, uh, bunny ears, bunny slippers, kilt. <laughs> That's, that's the way to do it. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, Shout-outs, of course, to Ekondis out here. I see Eagle. Eagle, <clears throat> how you doing? Good to see you always out there. Of course, I uh, got Trotty and Mom here in studio along with uh, Caffeine. I see uh, Holly Hawks out there. We got Randy, uh, Drak and Naruto, and more. Uh, slowly filtering in. Gotta make the daily announcement in-game. Let folks know that we've got some giveaways and uh, some stuff that they should probably all be uh, tuning into. So let me get that done. Send this out to everybody. And of course, let me see if anybody goes, Stop spamming, Laz! <laughs> Not spam, it's an announcement. So the crash bug is fixed on QA. Yes, I saw that from Chris. And uh, we've got some other announcements. We do have some patch notes. Uh, we've got some stuff on the uh, test server. So, uh, of course... One of the things that uh, I'm actually happy to see is that the QA is up all month round and uh, therefore testing for little questions. I know plenty of times uh, I've had uh, you know, things that 
I thought of after a release and says, oh, I want to go test that. And the QA had already been taken down. And by the time I got around uh, three weeks later to the next reopening of it, <clears throat> either I, I forget about it and, you know, again, I remember after, after the fact. So it's always nice to see that. Uh, and especially if you want to test things, uh, there's certain things that there that, uh, yeah, I want to check out if this works, that works. Can I trade this properly? Can I package that and all sorts of other things? But, uh, patch notes from April 2nd. Yes, I know. That, that's, that's one of them things. We're going to keep you all updated. What the heck is that? Is that the, uh... One of the di dia mugs that is making that lighting effect? I think Chris went overboard. Either that or I really gotta get me one of those things. What is that, Ekondis? Let me see. I gotta examine him. The Chaos Magic Glowing Mug. Man, that thing's bright. Yeah, don't worry about it for right now. I I got the original glowing mug in my uh, pack, but man, all of a sudden you pulled that out and I could just see, it's like, you know, hey, if I want to throw a party, i just going to give out a bunch of those cups and have people stand around with them. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool if you can get a room full of people with those, man. That's, that's your lighting effects right there. <clears throat> But speaking of lighting effects, <clears throat> speaking of things to come, uh, we're going to start uh, start out with some updates, some tweets from Chris, and uh, <clears throat> uh, we'll do a giveaway. <clears throat> hey. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> a little something caught there today. Don't know what's going on. But uh, one of my favorites these days. Is the Palomino. Palominos. Because I've been seeing horses everywhere I go. And I've been taming horses everywhere I go. Anticipating, of course. You know, being able to use these things. You know. And want every once in a you know soon enough. Eagle, my goodness. Five hundred bits. Thank you very much. And of course that's going to trigger a game of marbles and uh, preempt preempt the news here. Uh also while we're on that topic, Eagle donating five hundred bits. Of course, Eagle's our biggest supporter. He's always in these races, but you only got a couple days left in the month to get in on the race. Now, don't forget, we've got a fantastic prize that we have for you. Uh, you can win these lovely chip clips. That's right, chip clips. That's what they're advertised as. They're chip clips. <laughs> you can check the link below on Twitch as well. Or... We give away 500 Kodos. Of course, uh, the physical prize only ships in the U.S. and territories. Uh, if you live outside the U.S., you get the 500 Kodos. But since the Kodos have been rolling over, uh, this month's prize is 1,500 Kodos or the aforementioned chip clips. And all you got to do to qualify for the race at the beginning of next month, which is only a couple days away, is be a donator at the $5 level anywhere in the stream, whether it's 500 bits a subscription or a $5 sub over at patreon.com slash ndnn. And you get entered automatically into that race for a chance to win. So got to remind everybody else about that is... Uh, Heritage item. Yeah, well, why does that not surprise me, Holly? <laughs> it's a heritage item. But, of course, uh, Eagle is a big fan of track number 21. I already know that. The House of Pain. <laughs> 
Well, you know, you got three three different bags, you know, hanging out in the closet. You string them all in tandem, right? Yeah, that's the ticket. <laughs> Yes, I know, 21 Eagle, yes, his, his lucky track, exclamation play, get in on the marbles game, exclamation, I love free shit, to get in on a chance to win a Palomino horse. So, release 77's coming out, and of course, again, everywhere I'm going, since uh, I know all of you guys are out there finishing off your quests, right? You're getting all that 10 times experience and doing all those quests and knocking those out and getting all that, all that good stuff done. Or you're getting like me, frustrated because you can't figure out why your quest won't clear even though you've spoken to the proper PC. And uh, yes, a lot of that's uh, been bugged out there and uh, I'm trying everything just to get as much junk out of my book as possible. Let me click start here, exclamation play, get in on the action. I see most of you folks are already in, so we got 69 seconds for everybody else to get in. Of course, the rules are very simple. If you win, I give you scrolls. If I win, you get nothing. If Jack were here, he would say you'd have to send him scrolls, but he's in a meeting right now, stuck tied up in that real world stuff. Hate when that happens. But yes, everywhere I'm going, all I see are horses. Everywhere I notice horses are popping up and I've been giving away horses. I've been taming horses. So why are we still waiting on horses and specifically rideable horses? We have plenty of them in the game. Um, if it's that low hanging, and we've talked about this several times, let's get it in there. You know what I'm saying, people? All right, time to race. <clears throat> As we head on down through the House of Pain. Dark Blue Monkey. How you doing out there, buddy? I see Bridge Troll, Venetrix. Here we go, some names. Cleo. All right. And here we go. Headed on through the first mixer. John Spags. Oh, no, nope, he got caught off. Chris Pallet and Venetrix slid through. Gorik ejected. Sorry, dude. Fenetrix slides through both of those mixers unscathed. This does Cleo as they go down into the funnels. Let's see who exits first. Fenetrix out first. Cleo, dude, and Chris Pallid giving chase. And these guys all hung up here. Leo dude. Sliding through, heading in through the triple mixers. This is where things always get fun on this track. And spit out the other side real quick. Leo dude looks like he's gonna get in. For the win! Congratulations, Cleo, dude! Cleo's just won himself some scrolls. We'll get those right out to you. Congrats! You are a wiener! Alright, now, uh, inventory! Let's get these out of the big bag. There we go. All right, Cleo Dude, congrats as we watch everybody else try and finish the race up there. But yes, realistically, uh, just uh, one of them things that's been nagging on my mind. Yes, pun intended, nag horse. Yeah, you get it. 
Um, as to if it's just such low-hanging fruit, what's taking so long to get it in there? We know that there's plenty of prefabs out there. We know that it's not going to look perfect. We know that every other game it has is hitches and hang-ups and idiosyncrasies. That's just the nature of video gaming. So, you know, next couple of releases, it'd be nice to see some mounts, maybe? You know, I don't know. What do you guys out there think of that? And thoughts on that? Because, uh, you know, the lands aren't getting any smaller out there, as you know. Eventually, we're going to have several other continents that we're going to travel on. Uh, as mentioned yesterday is uh, Mist Render Land Rush. You know, like, lot uh, town placement is pretty much finished, so uh, they're just still in certain... Um... <laughs> His mom says uh, that's because even though we all know that stuff, people will still complain about the bugs, including me. Um, yeah, well, I mean, if it's really buggy, I mean, I don't really worry about visual glitches. I mean, like, uh, I'll take the Capron for an, an example. Uh, the Capron, while we considered it hysterical, it was a bug, and we complained about it. It wasn't anything that stopped me from doing anything, and of course, it was just funny to pick on. I mean, come on, you know, is, uh, the Capron, the Capron... I still believe should be an item, you know, there should should be, or at least an apron, you know, just that you, you tie on front, I mean, you know, full, full, uh, frontal aprons, I mean, we should have things like this, but, uh, yes, I mean, if it's really that glitchy, of course we're gonna complain about it, but we still want it, that, that makes no difference. <laughs> There you go, Holly. Well, see, you know, that's that's not too far away. Uh, you know, Lord British's birthday is what? Just a month and a half away now? Two months away? Uh, three months away. I'm sorry. Okay, about three three months away. Uh, let's see. Uh, May 4th, June 4th. Uh, just two, about two months away. Yeah, so... <laughs> But that's also two new releases, so that's, that's quite a possibility. Again, we know that there's plenty of uh, prefab packages out there that can be played with and messed with and inserted. Uh, just, I guess it just matters how well they play with everything that's already programmed into the system. And I understand that. I definitely do. But uh, moving right along, let's get over to the Tweetiverse, and uh, we'll get some tweets in here for you. We'll talk about some other things. We've got some tweets. We've got some patch notes. That's right. Uh, we're two days outside of release, and there was a patch. Uh, I believe it was last night that came through. But uh, let's go over to the Twitterverse first and uh, talk about a couple things that Chris has updated uh, out here. Uh, da -da -da, we're going... <clears throat> Actually, uh, yesterday, I believe it was, yesterday, 27th, yes it was, Builds Going for Live... <clears throat> go, yeah, Builds Going for Live to fix the light issues... Plus a common crash when zoning into scenes. Ooh, the zoning into scenes is fixed, maybe? Yeah. QA builds queue up right behind the live builds with fixes plus barred specialization. Build machine is going to be working overtime today, and that was yesterday. And uh, 18 hours ago on the Tweetiverse for the bards out there and I was watching somebody on a stream go they narfed it again I'm going fire screw this noise I'm out of here but a bards out there upset about neutering concussive canical reminder that in three days three days Bard specialization goes live to make it stronger. Hmm. Then sometime after that, Bard instruments make it stronger again. 
If you can't wait, Bard skills are set at a 100% return rate, which does not make sense. If they can't wait, why would they just lose it all? If, you know, if they can't wait, well, they're just shit out of luck. They're gonna have to wait. Yeah. <clears throat> Trick Steve says, not completely, still some crashing. Still crashing after several other teleports when you go into a dockside area. Is that the, that the kind of weird teleport? Because that's where it happens to me the most. <clears throat> and again, this was, this was as of last night's patch. Um, which we'll get to those patch notes in a minute. So where, where did you crash, Steve? Because I'm really curious as to where everybody else is seeing that. And yeah, the slight delay and he might have just stepped away for a second. We shall see. But yes, uh, so some updates and actually let's just hit a refresh in, Chris, in case Chris put anything else out there just uh, before the show. And no. Uh, Still the, still the same stuff. <clears throat> yes, you said that, uh... <laughs> to Bee's Boobs. They're an actual town with that name. <laughs> Economist, yeah, okay. Uh, the crashing bug... No, uh, well, uh, we'll get to that here in a second, I guess. I guess that's coming up next with the patch notes. Um, and yeah, that's not in the patch notes, that's right. Okay, because the patch notes were just a couple little things, uh, which were really nice, and uh, we'll, we'll notice that hopefully here when it gets dark again. But patch notes for, uh... <clears throat> yeah, April 2nd at 4 p.m. Yes, April 2nd, that says, right? <laughs> uh, fix for lighting issues. So everybody out there with those, uh... Lighting issues, uh, you should now uh, be able to see things. And again, that's what I'm saying. We'll, we'll be able to check that when it gets dark here shortly on the set and see how the lighting's working. I know by that mug that uh, Yukonda's pulled out that the lighting should be working really nice. And of course, uh, again, the F4 mentioned reduction in damage, extra effects for concussive canticle. So, uh, yep, it's getting narfed, nerfed, neutralized, uh, balanced is the preferred word. It's getting balanced. You all know how that goes. But yes, uh, of course, with the barding skill, uh, there have been the complaints that I don't pull out my instrument. It's coming. And, uh, of course, once that comes, you're going to complain that you stop attacking and you, you don't have a weapon equipped. Well, that's going to be part of the give and take of whether you truly want to be a bard or not. Because if you're going to be playing a full-time bard, you're going to be that person standing there like I'm sitting there with a loot in your hand and crying while your party's dying. And you better hope hope to have a, another build on cap just in case you got to save your own ass and get out of there. But uh, actually, you know, I've noticed uh, going out on hunts, the bard skills do have a helping hand out there in certain cases. Um, I haven't studied the full effects of them, so I really can't comment too much on it. I've been doing uh, just too much work on priorities that I've been sitting pushing off for the, you know, to the side, filling out uh, all the trees that I almost had filled out and uh, getting specializations picked out and all that fun stuff. Still stuck on my last specialization, folks. I just don't know. Don't know whether I go with specialize in healing 
Do I specialize in something else? Do I go with tactics? It's it's a tough choice. Do I go with fire? Um, tough, tough choices out there. Chainer is uh, technically, yes, it's supposed to be a support slash solo class. Uh, uh, if you're a tamer and you have the barding skills, uh, you should be able to take most places out with a kick-ass pet and some barding skills and let your pet do a lot of the work um, to do some, you know, to do a lot of solo stuff. So if, if done right and, you know, it's, it gets the right love and attention, uh, taming, taming's almost got just about everything you need. Uh, be nice for my pets to actually listen to my commands when I say attack that shit. I want it to attack that shit, not just move forward two centimeters and go, Hi, I love you. And I go attack that shit, and it comes up again and goes, Hi, I love you. And I go attack that shit, and it goes, Hi, I love you. And I go attack that shit, and finally he goes, Oh, that? Okay, I'll take care of that for you. And then he goes and kills it. Yeah. It'd be nice if they just did it on the first, you know, first try and took the commands. But, uh, you know, again, that'll, that'll, that'll hopefully get fleshed out eventually, too. But, uh, yeah, um, I do a lot of my hunting. I have for a long, long time as a uh, solo uh, tamer. And if anybody who knows me knows me well... And this will especially go out to Justin out there who just, you know, everybody always loved my uh, NBNN security spider because he got in everybody's freaking way. And uh, hunting solo, you know, having a, a pet that both poisons and stops your attacker, you know, that uses the web and stops them in their tracks, uh, is very, very beneficial. So if you can stop your your attacker and um, get your attacks in before they get to you the spider was a very handy creature these days nightmare is the way to go and of course uh, I, it would be nice if I could ride that nightmare into battle that would be freaking cool um, you know hop on the top of my nightmare with my crossbow that's that's the kind of action I'm talking about so uh, <clears throat> what do we got going on here? <laughs> Dark Blue Monkey, what do you mean you rented? Are you are you literally playing the game in the cloud? Is that what you're telling me? You're playing in the cloud? Okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm going, geez. Yeah, I'm going, well, you know, they got that thing out there. Uh, the, the, uh, what the hell is the name of it? <clears throat> yeah, well, you know, we, we know about this web-based browser game. Uh, you know, we know all about that econ. This, yeah, that, that was, uh. Yeah, hey, no, I, I would take something like that in a heartbeat if it was, uh, what is the platform I'm thinking about? I can't think of the name of it. There's been a lot of controversy over it because it was, uh, letting you play games that they really didn't have the right, supposedly, to let you play. Is, uh... Oh, Stadia. Stadia? No, that wasn't Stadia. It was, uh, <clears throat> somebody asked about it. Was it just got to do with the G-Force? Yeah, there was a GeForce thing going on. I think it was called GeForce Now or something. GeForce Now is the platform. That's that's the one <clears throat> where they they store the game in the cloud. They actually image it, overload your stats into it, and you play it like uh, like you would do you were doing remoting into uh, a workstation at work, Caffius. Yeah, I mean. I could see that if you can get rid of the latency, but it's bad enough with latency just on a local machine, let alone loading it up in the cloud like that. I love the concept, but 
Yeah. I My don't friend know. used to have an NVIDIA Shield. I used to play that. I played Borderlands 2 on it, I think it was. But that was... Yeah, I mean, it's a great concept for gaming if everybody's on the same playing field. So if everybody's got to load in through the same cloud platform for multiplayer, then anybody, everybody gets technical. Well, I guess not technically. Whoever's closer get, gets a better ping still. But, you know, that would level a playing field a little better compared to playing on a cloud versus somebody playing locally. But, yeah. <laughs> GeForce 100 milliseconds ago? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, people don't understand how long 100 milliseconds is. Isn't that just one second? Or is that a thousand milliseconds? No, a thousand's That's one. A thousand hundred's a tenth of a second. Tenth of a second, right. But yes, anyway. Moving right along. That's patch notes and other stuff here inside Shroud of the Avatar. What else did I have loaded up for you guys today? Oh, got to remind you all about the other stuff, but uh, we'll do that uh, in just a moment. Don't forget, exclamation, I love free shit. Get in on the Palomino horse giveaway. And I've been giving away a lot of horses because, hey, come on. We got to have them someday, and you're going to need them. So, And, uh, you know, it's just uh, I've been running into so many of them taming. I still got a couple things I got to work on in my taming tree, so I still got to do it. <clears throat> so I might as well tame some cool stuff. All right, exclamation, I love free shit. We'll give everybody a couple more seconds to get in on this action. Another big question is what we're going to see for uh, the upcoming uh, release giveaways. Uh, not giveaways, but the monthly login. Again, we're two days out. We don't have any notes, and I'm looking just to see if there's any updates on that. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Going to close it out. Trinity getting in just on the neck of time. Anybody else? Last, 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 last chance. <laughs> All right, closing it out. You'll have to wait for the next one if you miss this one. And getting in under the gun, Trinity 33 is the winner. Go ahead and give me, yeah, ain't that, ain't that great. Last one in, first one out. Congrats to you. Give me your in-game name. We'll go ahead and get that out to you. And what is the next one that uh, I think I was going to do the other horse as well. We've got the blanket horse. So next one, in-game name Trinity. I like those easy ones. All right, cool. We're going to reset. We're going to do 10,000 gold. And the blanket horse. Just because I can. Uh, exclamation, I love free shit. Get in on the action. Get yourself a chance to win a blanket horse and 10,000 gold. Now, these are a couple of topics uh, that uh, I came across, and I saw these the other day. I had them off to the side. And I'm going to step back to them real quick because, uh, just because, it's, uh, I find the second one here. <clears throat> ah, there it is. Ah, 
Let's get this queued up. Is uh, this is coming from uh, Fatality Dark out there, and uh, he needs help with deck building. He's coming out to the community, and he wants to know about deck building. And he says, I'm trying to build two decks, one for staff, one for the battle axe. I know basic setup of decks and locked and unlocked as well as slugs when you're just starting out. I'm not asking for specific help with building these builds, just some questions that still confuse me. I have watched a lot of the tutorials, but most of them are old and don't have the same look as current mode. So here are my questions. If my minimum deck size, say 20, and I have unlocked a lot of skills, why would I not want to put one of each active glyph in a deck in unlock mode? Good question. And absolutely, uh, I gotta agree with you, is that um, it just confuses me still, and I've been here for six plus years so you're not alone out there why if i have all those skills can i not use them is basically what he's asking if i can put five cards of a spell in my deck for several skills adding to the total number of cards why would that be good or bad actually yes yeah, so statistically it's better but why beyond me absolutely if I do either or both of the first two questions, why does it sometimes say the glyph cannot be drawn to any of the other deck's hot bar slots? Trout math. Um, yeah, no, that's another whole thing altogether. And four, is it better to have a lot of glyphs in one deck or split DPS and health into one deck and buffs into another deck? Uh, those are my main questions for now, and of course, <clears throat> all valid questions. <clears throat> yes, well, first off, you know, I, I just gotta, I, you know, I gotta laugh here, because um, let's get over to the main screen real quick. Let's get back to the game screen, because this has been another one of these things that dr drives me a little batty. Um... I'm going to get my decks out here. That's the wrong thing. Uh, why? Let me get my combat decks out here. As you'll notice, I, I've got se separate builds of my mage. And uh, you'll notice I have slugs. You know why I have slugs? Because... Uh, I play with the lock deck, so you would think that if you were playing with a lock deck, you wouldn't have that still in the game. Um, it doesn't matter how many cards I have in a lock deck because it's a lock deck. Hello, McFly. Hello. Um, first off, second off, I I never you know, understood slugs i mean i understand them but you know i i never yeah the, the floating deck system is just never not, not something i've ever liked um appreciated i think it is the most convoluted system i've ever seen but that's just my two cents uh <clears throat> but <clears throat> yeah see <clears throat> excuse me he's got uh valid questions as a new player and uh I, you know, again, right to his first first question. If I have 20 or more skills, you know, why wouldn't I want to put them in there? I want to be able to have access to everything and anything. And, you know, for the life of me, I'm still asking that same question. Uh, why? Because I'm in combat mode. I shouldn't be able to do that. Let me switch back to my clothes. Here we go. Play something a little different. 
But yes, and then of course, uh, the uh, community has been kind enough to go ahead and, uh, you know, give him a lot of these answers out there. Um, I must say that, <clears throat> for the most part, most of those tutorials really still bear um, the, same, the same information, so... So what do we got going on? Uh, yeah, Ekondis, I know that, you know, but you know what I, I really do these days is uh, when I have my, uh, I'm out doing something, actually out of that whole 10, um, <clears throat> excuse me, tile deck, I'm not even using most of that. Usually whatever is on the end is something I'm training. So I'll just go out, I'll, I'll hit my skills, <clears throat> um, let's just take, uh, <clears throat> Earth, and say I was training, uh, Stone Fist, I just drag that right down there to the end, and, and drop that in that slot, and I start using it. <clears throat> I, I don't even bother with going into the deck system and changing anything anymore, um, unless I really have to, I really messed up by adding a lot of stuff, and I just gotta clean it up a little bit. <clears throat> Trick Steve, unlock slots are great for single-use items. I I don't understand. I can use yeah, I can use my glyph in a single use. Or you talk you talking about like uh, rotating buffs that are, that'll just be uh, floating through that you only need a single click for. Again, most most of that passive stuff I keep down on my uh, my regular bar. Uh, you'll see all sorts of weird stuff down there. <clears throat> you actually can't see it down here, but yeah, let me pull that up there. I mean, I I keep a lot of stuff that can be just done on this bar, so that I don't need to be <clears throat> bothered with having that stuff in my combat bar because. I don't need that stuff in combat. <clears throat> yeah, I, I mean, I could see if you have a, a need for it. And again, uh, I'm, I'm yeah, and again, it still gets me, uh, you know, using skills from stuff that, you know, I'm not fully vetted in. I'll give you an example. I know people like to use, you know, uh, skills in one tree, like, you know, Knight's Grace. We, even though they may not be wearing it, or endurance, but, you know, using these skills when they may not be doing it, and I know it varies back and forth. Magic is probably a better, uh, <clears throat> like, uh, you know, strength of earth. You'll notice I've GM strength of earth, but I've got nothing else in it. <clears throat> but do I still stack it? Absolutely, because you still get a little bit more from stacking it. That's just the way it is. Uh, is the difference really bad? You know what? For the couple hit point difference, it's not too bad in most cases, but sometimes those couple of hit points really matter, and you all know that. But, uh, yeah. is uh, it's, it's probably the most confusing system out there, dude. So if you happen to be catching this, uh, my advice to you is just be patient. Learn what works for you, and don't sweat the small stuff, because uh, there are a million ways to manipulate this thing, and uh, whether you like it, like some people, or dislike it like others, myself and Jack included, um, you learn to use it, you learn to manipulate it, you learn to uh, figure out what works where you need it. And uh, if not, then uh, become a merchant. There's always that option. <laughs> yeah, it is, uh, makes it last longer, too. Uh, some do, some don't, Ekondis. Uh, that, that one in particular, I think, does. But, uh, again, there's still a lot out there that why this one is exactly like that one, but it's not because Trout Math. <clears throat> Uh, several different instances of that still out there, but, uh, again, just, uh, 
Specialization for barding is coming. So for you folks looking for barding, we'll throw some more into the twist there. Yes, yeah, so I'm still... Uh, uh, let's bring that back up again. That's another one. Is Again, uh, I am a tamer, merchant, basic, you know. I, I, I like the open system, but... You know, it leaves a lot to uh, question. Um, I originally wanted to go fire and death, but those didn't seem to work properly. Death still leaves me lacking. I was doing a whole bunch of work in the death tree. I'm um, sorry, that's the life tree. Death tree. <clears throat> I was doing a whole lot of work, and usually I like to work down over here. Uh, but... After the initial testings, and this was the very first tree that started getting its uh, bangs, I, I was really loving Death Ray, I was really loving Death Field, um, and, you know, the ability it gives you, but, you know, when they did the, uh, well, it doesn't work on Undead, well, 90% of the fighting is Undead, what, what, yeah, so, anyway, that was a big disappointment to me, is, uh, yeah, I, I go I go into the dungeons in the underground. I'm not fighting the humanoids most of the time. You know, I was out the other day, Condis. Funny you mentioned that. Uh, we were in a party. I don't know. You might have even been there. Was, uh out in a party and somebody was using corpse explosion out at the control point and blowing up corpses. Is that still a thing? You can still blow up the corpse before people loot it? Apparently, or it was just, uh, <clears throat> it just, it was annoying somebody, you know, it was annoying everybody in the group, and it's like, stop using, explode the corpse, damn it, I mean, it was funny as all get out, but, uh, yes, used properly, corpse explosion, uh, can be a very handy, dandy little spell, absolutely, absolutely very handy spell. <clears throat> But moving right along, <clears throat> excuse me, awful froggy today, is uh, that's one of those things that just really uh, still gets me to this day is, uh, you know, I've seen people play and again, the, the floating system was nice at a point until all the cooldowns come in now, you know. Um, I don't like the fact that if I cast one spell, all the other spells in my deck now cool down. What is the one spell I just got casted got to do with the other spell that's over here loaded up? Absolutely nothing in my opinion. So, um, it, there's plenty to love, plenty to hate, and it's uh, one of them systems that whether you either love it or you hate it. That's all I can say on that topic. And again, <clears throat> it's not a topic that we don't cover. We cover it any time somebody asks about it just because um, it needs some work in our opinion. But moving right along, got to tell you folks all about that lovely NBNN Shroud of the Avatar community calendar that we have, which is hosted on nbnn.info and brought to us by our good friends over at Rebatest where you can get yourself some free shit. That's right. I love free shit, and I want you guys to have free shit. Reba Test is a site where you can go out and buy some stuff, review it for them, and they will reimburse you your purchase price. And there's thousands of items to choose from. Everybody needs something on Reba Test, whether it be chargers, whether it be electronics, whether it be household goods, whether it be beauty products, they've got all sorts of stuff that people want you to buy and try just for your opinion. And the first time you do it, they'll toss in five bucks just for your first report. And hey, you know, who doesn't like an extra couple bucks? <clears throat> <laughs> Wish we had some money. They could add some body parts that all roll downhill after you explode something. What's that got to do with the money? To pay somebody to do the animation? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> but on the NBNN Shroud of the Avatar community calendar hosted on nbnn.info, 
Don't forget, every Monday through Friday, you can tune in to lunch right here on NBNN. Listen on your in-game radios, of course. Join us on Twitch.tv and uh, catch us in replays again on the in-game radios or on YouTube and Twitch. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. A little jump in the gun a little bit. Pack Slayer Town Manager Meeting at... 2 p.m. today. Join Sean Silverfoot out at Pack Slayer Fish for the ta Pack Slayer Town Manager meeting. Uh, 7 p.m. The 70s at 7 on WRFB Radio Free Britannia, and at 10, the Record Room with my dad and his partner Tom. We're giving you a rock and roll education every Monday through Friday at 10 p.m. Tune in for an hour of oldies and all sorts of great tidbits about the music that you grew up listening to. And I know there's some of you folks who know that really old stuff as well. So don't forget to tune in daily. And again, you are tuned in to lunch with Laz and Jack. The Outlanders is on Friday. Why, do they have a regular gig that should be on the, uh, on the other calendars? The Outlanders radio show or the Outlanders Twitch stream? Same guys, two different things. Although, I keep telling them they should stream and do the radio. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's what I figured, Holly. But yes, you're tuned in to lunch with Laz and Jack. Jack's stuck in a meeting today, and, you know, shit happens, folks. IRL first. He's got to make some big bucks. You know, you got those bills to pay. But don't forget, you can tune in twitch.tv slash Genesist when he's on. Twitch.tv slash NBNN News is the mainstream. Catching us. <laughs> Catching us in replays on YouTube and Twitch. Please hit those follow buttons, hit those notify, hit those uh, sub buttons. We do appreciate it. It helps us out, keeps us on the air. And it's thanks to folks like you who keep us on the air. Over five years bringing you the latest news and information, hijinks and shenanigans right here inside and outside Shroud of the Avatar. The Britannian Mining Company wants you to come check out Black Rock Cove. Black Rock Cove is located in the Quell region next to the town of Exeter and conveniently located next to those mines that you want to be near. So if you're looking for crafting goods, you're looking for a place to live, you're looking for a place to sell, get yourself over to Black Rock Cove today and check it out. WRFB Radio Free Britannia bring you the latest news and entertainment 24-7 around the clock, including us at 12s and 6s Monday through Friday, Beyond Wind Wild Main every Saturday night at 6, uh, yes, uh, Parson Bar and Vassler every Friday night. We've got... Uh, Aunt Sarah and and on Thursdays and all sorts of crazy stuff. We have a new G DJ who's going to be joining the airwaves soon enough. Is uh, the graceful bard is going to be uh, taking to the airwaves soon enough? Uh, waiting to hear back on her. She's getting all her stuff planned and together. So uh, we're going to be looking forward to seeing that as well and waiting for Wolfton. Woof, Tom. Feel better, dude. To finish recovering and get back to wake up New Britannia every Saturday morning. Of course, don't forget, if you're looking for ABC files to play inside Shroud of the Avatar, you can go out to shroudmusic.com. I've compiled a whole bunch of stuff to get started. We've had some other nice folks out there also... Uh, going ahead and adding to the collection and uh <clears throat> yeah holly she is absolutely i was watching a stream of hers and she happened to mention something about being a dj in radio and of course i chimed you know, right in and said hey i can make that happen for you and well the rest is history we're wait we're waiting on our first show so 
Um, also seeing some other great other people out there, but moving right along. Troutmusic.com for ABC file needs. Don't forget, go out and get them. You can share, upload, and download. Real simple site, nothing fancy, nothing, nothing great. Just some place where you can go get your hands on some stuff that uh, you can use. Again, Reba Test. Reba Test is where you can go and get some free stuff. And I'm telling you, they've got all sorts of stuff. I've gotten literally a thousand plus dollars in products off a of Reba Test. I mean, it is just incredible. I buy it, I try it, I review it, and then I either keep it or, you know what, I resell it on eBay and make an extra buck or two if I don't really care for the product after I try it, but it works, and you get your money back. There's only one hitch, folks, is that every time you get a payout, you pay the PayPal fee. So, yes, you do wind up paying a wee bit, but it's a small price to pay. You buy a $100 item and all you're paying is the PayPal fee, that, that's a wonderful thing in the end. That's all I'm going to say on that. You do the math. It's pretty pr pretty sweet, and you get some really killer products. Caffius is where's one of many, many shops out on ShroudMarketplace.com. Caffius is where's is where you go for all your wood needs. Caffius, anything to tell the good folks about your shop today? I know he was here just a moment ago. <clears throat> Got boss aggro. He's gone already. But yeah, look, he's he posted that a couple minutes ago. Absolutely. Let me put that up on screen real quick. We can switch over to that. I think I can switch over to that without. Uh... Yeah. Thousands of maple. Thousands of wood. Thousands of timber. <clears throat> nope, I guess I had a... Got to scroll back through them. Oh, well. Ship happens. <laughs> but don't forget to go check out Capius's Wares on ShroudMarketplace.com along with over 180 other vendors on the marketplace. But Shroud Marketplace is the place to go for all your virtual vendable goods. <clears throat> Inside, well, actually outside Shroudity Avatar. If you're looking for accounts, you're looking for game gold, you're looking for clothing, you're looking for just about anything, Shroud Marketplace is the place to go to get your goods. Goods. Now, I'm going to just put this out there because I don't think this is going to last long. But for those of you folks who are interested in the new crown store stuff and i'm gonna go and uh just give you a little taste because this is how we roll you're looking for any of these items that are currently in the vault that you missed in the past like the cylindrical droid or the blue electric sword or the sky navy helmets or the adobe dome vault set sets is uh Add up the prices, then come out and see me on Shroud Marketplace, and you'll get all those items and more for a better price. That's all I'm going to say. Get the whole original bundle, tradable bundle, for $20. That's right. 20 bucks gets you the whole bundle, but I don't think that's going to last long, not at these prices. Because I love when Portalarium, or should I say Catnip Games, sets the price for me. Oops, wrong, wrong, wrong side. Wrong slide. Yes, out at ShroudMarketplace.com, you can buy and sell everything and anything as long as it is not a bannable fence. You can go check out Cleo's leveling service. You can check out... Mom's or refining service, because Mom is the patron saint of lazy avatars. Eagle, have a good one. Yes, Draken is, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, you're so, so, so used to calling a portalarium that getting used to just, you know, and I know Chris is trying to make the change over so that people refer to it as that. Um, <clears throat> eventually, maybe. 
But uh, since catnip has set the price at uh, blue electric sword at $9, that means both swords in the bundle would cost you a total of $18. Well, let me uh, get out there and show you what we got. Because at Lazarus Long's Weddings and More by Laz, we've got all sorts of great deals, including bundles. And I don't even know if this one is on the main screen. It's, oh, there it is. The Sky Navy Bundle. That's right. For $20. $20. The Sky Navy Bundle comes with an assortment of great stuff. Why, why did that not open up? I need to open it up in another browser. I don't know. It's not cooperating. Let's see if I open it in a new tab. This is Sky Navy Bundle. There it is. Sky Navy Bundle comes with the blue sword, an electric halberd, an electric staff, an Adobe Dome set. You get the set, folks. It's 15 bucks just for those in the store. Burn skeletons, blue cylinders, blue aeronaut. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, white aeronaut clockwork helmet, blue aeronaut clockwork, black, I'm sorry, black, black and white. And more. The all metal crossbow, the red electric sword, and the cylindrical automaton. And these are all non heritage items. <clears throat> Just gotta put it out there, folks. But they ain't gonna last long, so if you want them, go get them. Troutmarketplace.com before I decide to split them up and sell them independently and make some buck on them, because I could really do that. <laughs> Famines, yeah, that's another good one. But meanwhile, is uh, we got to go ahead and wrap things up here. Let me see if there's anybody out there streaming that we can uh, go ahead and do a raid on. <clears throat> uh, let's see, Channel of the Avatar, that's... Uh, is that Caballero? I believe that's Caballero. Don't see him on much. He's live. Uh, Grissom plays. I don't know who that is. So uh, let's go ahead and go to Caballero, I guess, is where we'll go ahead. Don't forget, last chance, exclamation, I love free shit. Get in on the action. Win yourself 10,000 gold and a bay horse. <clears throat> We'll get this raid going here. We're going to start the raid. We're going to close out the giveaway. We're going to pick ourselves a winner. And John Spags, congratulations. You are the winner of 10,000 gold and a bay horse. Got to say thank you to Eagle. Put up big 500 bits, and thank you all for tuning in today. We do appreciate it. We'll be back with more tomorrow, right here on NBNN. Till then, I'm Laz. Jack's in a meeting, and we'll be back with more tomorrow, right here on NBNN. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you all tomorrow.